So now we're starting to get into the world of stated circuits or circuits that hold state. Uh, and when it comes to circuits that hold state, one of the most prominent circuits in that group of, of circuits is the RS NOR latch or the SR latch. The name is interchangeable. Uh, but it's basically this circuit right here. This is a circuit that's specifically designed to hold state, to remember state. And of course, you can change the state using the S and R input. Those stand for set and reset. And the state itself can be determined by examining either Q or Q bar. Um, so the, the principle is fairly simil, uh, simple. Uh, Q is going to be either 1 or 0, depending on what state you put it in. If it's a 0, you can change it to 1 by pulsing S, and it will remain 1 even if S goes back to low. And then you can set it back to 0 by pulsing R, and it will remain 0 even if R goes back to 0. So it is a circuit that remembers. So what it does is fairly straightforward. It's very s simple and easy to, to understand. How it does it can be a little bit confusing. Maybe I'm alone here, but uh, when I first saw this circuit, I personally thought it was uh, a little bit uh, convoluted and confusing exactly how to NOR gates with this sort of crisscross feedback loop uh, is able to remember things. It wasn't exactly clear. Uh, it wasn't exactly simple for me to understand. So if you're in that boat, um, I'd like to offer another circuit that does the same thing. It's, in my opinion, a little easier to wrap your head around. And uh, after that, we'll use De Morgan's theorem. We'll use bubble logic to transform that circuit uh, into this circuit to prove that they are the same circuit. So we'll start simple. Uh, let's start with a circuit that can at least remember when it's on. Uh, never mind how it actually turns on, and never mind how we actually get it to turn off. Let's just start with the circuit that remembers if it's on. Um, the easiest way to do that is to simply take a buffer. Uh, now, if you think back to uh, just a buffer, and this can just be a regular old buffer, so one input, one output, um, this will basically take the input and forward it to the output. So if A is uh, 1, Q is a 1, and if A is a 0, Q is a 0, just like that. So we can take this buffer here, and we can actually feed its output right back to its input. So if it's in a zero position, uh, it's going to remain off. It's, there's no stimulus to turn this circuit on. Uh, however, if it's in a one position, uh, we have a one on the input that's going to produce a one on the output. The output is going to go back into the input, and that uh, input is then going to be interpreted again as a one, keeping the circuit on. So this circuit will remain on no matter what. Um, there's nothing you can do to actually turn the circuit off. Now, suppose we wanted to turn the circuit on, because obviously there's no way of actually turning the circuit on. We just kind of have to assume it's on and, and live with it. Um, if we want to turn the circuit on, what we need is basically a buffer that can turn its output on if it receives uh, a one on its input or, say, a set input. Now, fortunately, there's already a, a logic gate that does that. It's called an OR gate. So an OR gate is basically just a buffer with two inputs. So we can take one of those inputs, we can tie it to our S input, we can take another one of those inputs and tie it to its output, and we basically have the same thing. Um, this circuit will remain off uh, until it receives a signal on the S input, um, and we'll actually demonstrate that by listing the um, inputs of an OR gate, so 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 1, 1. So, if we take a look at the logic gate when it's off, we can see that it's uh, A input, which is basically Q, is 0. S, which is B, uh, is 0. And uh, that's going to result in a Q of 0. So the output is off. Q is going to be 0. Uh, if we turn S on, uh, what that's going to do is it's going to turn on the B input right here. Um, so we're basically looking for the combination where A is 0 and B is 1. That's going to be this one right here. That's going to create an output of 1 on Q. Uh, but remember, Q is going back into A. So in the next time cycle, um, A is going to be a 1. So what will end up happening is A is going to be 1, B is going to be 1. That's going to be this combination right here. And Q will remain 1. Uh, so then once we have that position, we can then turn S off. So S is now a 0. Uh, that's going to be a 0 on B. So now we're in the state where A is 1 and B is 0. That's this one right here. And Q remains on. Uh, in fact, it's going to remain that way because the output Q is going back into A. So we basically just created a latch that can be turned on by sending a pulse to S. 
and it will remain on indefinitely. So what if we want to turn off this latch? Right now we have a good way of turning it on and it will stay on, but we don't have any way of turning it back off. Uh, how exactly would we do that? Well, remember, the, the reason why this latch remains on is because of this feedback loop. Uh, the output is being fed into one of the inputs of the OR gate, so as long as any of these inputs are on, this output will be on, and uh, that's going to feed back into, well, one of the inputs, so it's going to remain on. So if you can break this, this feedback loop right here, cut that off, uh, you can turn off the latch effectively. So what we want is we want a way of breaking this feedback loop with a, another signal. Now the easiest way to do that is just with an AND gate. Remember, an AND gate is going to cut off a signal between an input and an output if there is no signal present on its other input, or if there is a signal present, it's going to allow it through. This effectively acts as a as a gate, as a, as a gated buffer, if you will. Uh, so obviously with this particular configuration, we have to have a signal present in order for this feedback loop to be complete, uh, but we want it to be complete by default, and be incomplete with the present of another signal. So we're going to go ahead and just invert that input right there. Um, and that now becomes our reset input. So so long as the reset input is low, uh, this inverter will turn it to high, and now this AND gate basically becomes well a wire. Any input that, that comes in on, on here is going to be reflected on the output. It's going to act exactly uh, like a wire. However, if we turn on the uh, reset input, that's going to turn this off, and now this AND gate basically blocks all signals. It doesn't matter what comes in on the input, because this input is a zero, the output is going to be zero. That's just how it works. So uh, we can, with the configuration set like this, R set to zero, we can set S to one, and that's going to turn on the OR gate. It's going to send a one out to Q. That one is also going to go back into the OR gate, and it's going to keep that OR gate on. Uh, we can then uh, turn S off, we can set S to zero, and that feedback loop is going to keep that circuit on. We can then break that feedback loop by turning on R, uh, which is going to turn off this AND gate, breaking the feedback loop, and turning the OR gate off. That's going to set Q to zero. Um, we can then set uh, R to zero, uh, turn R off, and that's going to uh, re-enable the feedback loop, um, and the OR gate is going to remain off because Q was already set to zero. There's no one going through the feedback loop. It's going to turn off. So that's pretty easy to understand. It's not too terribly difficult to follow. It makes perfect sense. Um, and it does exactly what the RS NOR latch over here does. It remembers the state of this, of this uh, OR gate here and reflects it on Q. And that state can be manipulated by the SNR inputs, exactly like what we were seeing over here. Um, so now we just need to show that these two circuits are the same. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply some of uh, D. Morgan's theorem to this AND gate right here. Now, D. Morgan's theorem basically states that uh, any AND gate can be replaced by an OR gate if you invert all the inputs and outputs. So we can redraw this AND gate down here uh, as an OR gate, and we can invert all of its inputs and outputs. So we'll invert that, invert that. Um, and because that input was already inverted, we'll just leave it as it is. So we'll call that R. Um, and then that goes down to this OR gate. That goes to there. Just like that. So, and I know that looks like a 5, just ignore it. So now we can apply bubble logic to this, of course. Remember, uh, bubbles in bubble logic can slide. We can take this bubble right here and we can slide it down uh, to the input of this uh, OR gate right here. And so by sliding that bubble down from the input of this NOR gate to the output of this OR gate, uh, what we've done is we've turned this circuit uh, consisting of an OR gate and a NOR gate with an inverted input into two NOR gates. Now you may have also noticed that I have changed Q to Q bar, and that is because uh, when we slide this bubble down, uh, this output is now being inverted. Uh, normally we would, you know, if we were to truly represent it, the, uh, the Q output would be uh, right there before the inverter, uh, but I've gone ahead and just done away with it and changed it to Q bar. We'll see why we did that in just a minute here. Um, so now we have this circuit right here, uh, and if I were to go ahead and rotate this circuit uh, around, or, or rotate this, this OR gate, um, or this NOR gate, excuse me, uh, what you'll see is you'll see this wire kind of go off into this direction. Um, in fact, I'll even draw that here. 
So again, all I've done is I've, uh, I've just taken this top NOR gate and I've just turned it around 180 degrees. So we can go ahead and draw the line going out to there. That's our R line. We've got our S line right here. Um, and if we follow the, the logical connections, we can see that the output of this NOR gate uh, splits off from Q bar and goes up into the secondary input of the R. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll, we'll draw our output with Q bar. And we'll go ahead and tee that off. So this is going to go again from the output to the input of the other OR gate, or NOR gate, excuse me. So we'll just kind of go up and over. And then likewise with this, we have this output of this NOR gate coming down into the input of the other NOR gate. Um, so we can do the same thing, output of this top NOR gate down into the bottom of the second NOR gate. And you can see now we've pretty much got the exact same thing as we've got up here. The only difference, of course, is uh, Q is not connected here. And so if we want to connect Q, obviously Q is just going to be the inverse of Q bar. So we can just use an inverter like that, and that will create our Q output. Uh, but we don't necessarily have to do that because, you know, we already have an inverter right here. If you if you take a look at this, this output is always going to be the input, uh, the inverse of this input. Um, so we can actually just skip that entirely and just use the in, uh, inverter that we have available from our NOR gate. And so now you can actually see we actually have the exact same circuit. Uh, we've taken our simplified circuit here and we've uh, convoluted it, I guess. We've, we've rearranged it using De Morgan's theorem and we ended up with the exact same circuit that we started with over here, this RS NOR latch. So if you ever want to know exactly how an RS NOR latch does what it does, this is basically it. I mean, this pretty much sums up the exact process of it. You you basically have a feedback loop that you can turn on with an S line and uh, cut off with an R line, and then Q is going to give you uh, the result of that. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully this helps you grasp the idea of exactly how an RS NOR latch works and how you can implement one. They're really not that difficult. They just take a little bit of time to wrap your head around is all. Um, however, I would highly recommend wrapping your head around these quickly. Get familiar with them, get comfortable with them because you're gonna be seeing them a lot. Sequential logic and, and um, uh, stated logic rely heavily on memory, and memory is comprised of these uh, memory cells, these flip-flops, if you will, these RS NOR latches. So you're going to be seeing this circuit appear quite a lot. So again, I would highly recommend familiarizing yourself with it and getting used to it.